Engineer man here. Time to learn how GCC carries out compilation. No time to waste. Let's do this. Today's level is beginner. What steps are involved in GCC compilation? If you've ever ran the GCC command and provided a C source file, you'll notice that it gives you an a.out executable, unless there's an error. There's a lot of magic that happens in the background when you do that. There's actually four steps. The first step is pre-processing. Pre-processing, first thing it does is it takes all the header files and includes them into your source. The second thing it does is it expands and inlines all of your macros. The third thing it does is it strips out all of your comments. After that, it moves on to the compilation step. This is actually the most com complex step because it does semantic analysis of your actual code. It checks it for errors. It removes dead code and removes unreachable code. And if you specify a type of optimization, it goes ahead and it runs those passes. At this point, your code is now in assembly. So then it goes through assembly, which converts it to ac an actual object file. And then finally it goes through linking, where it takes that object file, combines it with any libraries that are present, and also possibly the C standard library. At that point, you now have an executable. So let's actually run this. So I'm going to create a sample. Oops. I'm going to create a sample file here, real simple. I'm going to do standard IO. I'm just going to do main. I'm going to put the arguments. I'm going to do a printf. We'll call it hello world. This will be my simple file. So over here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, first I'm going to open my outline so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to actually use the dash E, and this is the pre-processing step. I'm going to specify the sample.c, and you'll see that it outputs it to standard out, which is what it does by default. What I can also do instead is I can specify an output file, which I will do. I'm going to call it sample underscore exp for expanded dot c. So now I'm going to open that file just to show you what it looks like. Now my file went from this to this. So that's all the header information from stdio. H. And at the very bottom, you'll notice that it has my actual source. And you'll notice that, well, I didn't provide a comment. But if there was a comment in there, you would notice the comment was gone. Next step we're going to do is we're going to actually compile this into assembly. So we'll do GCC dash capital S. We'll provide that expanded C file. If you don't provide an output file, it creates the name of the file except with a S instead. So now we'll actually look at that. And you'll see now this is the actual assembly code. You'll notice it's not that long because it's going to go ahead and discard all the code that it doesn't need to actually run. And that's what's left over. So now we're going to create an actual object file. So we'll do dash C. We'll provide the S file this time. Now at this point, if we open that object file, we'll notice that it's more or less unreadable. There's some readable characters, but a lot of it's not. So back to our outline. And then we'll take the object file, and all we have to do now is just give it an output name. So I'll just do 008 underscore sample. That's going to be our executable name, and then I'm going to pass it that object file. And then now I have an executable, which I can then run over here. And it says, hello world. And that's it. Hopefully everyone is smarter having watched this video. If I forgot to cover something or you'd like to request a video, post a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. See you next time.